Hi, this is Greg of Pensacola, Florida, and I'd like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to do another Kickstarter terrain review, and this time it is the Terrain for Print, Fantasy Viking Village, and Sci-Fi Armored Barracks by Marcus Krusey from Sweden. Uh, I did the Warlayer video, I think it's been over a month now that I did that preview video for Andrew's Kickstarter. And uh, after that video showed, I got an email from Marcus and he asked if I would take a look at his terrain from his Kickstarter and if I wouldn't mind putting it up on the channel. And I said, sure, you know, that's kind of the, where I'm angling the channel towards is just to review great terrain and stuff to put on your tabletop. So I said, sure. So I got an email from him and uh, got a link to the files to uh, download. And he has a fantasy version, so, you know, with the Viking section. And then he had a sci-fi section. Well, just started playing 40K, so I need as much 40K terrain as I possibly can on my table. And I'm still printing the Warlayer stuff as it's being, as it's being released. So I sat there and said, I'm going to start with the sci-fi. So this week, we're going to take a look at the sci-fi section of his terrain. We're going to look at some of the models that I've printed on here. We'll talk about them a little bit. And then at the end, um, I'll just run it, you know, with some music like I normally do at the end. I don't have an assembly video like I did on the Z1. But what I'm going to do is put the rest of the files, and I'm just going to load them up on the build plate and simplify 3D, and then just show them on the screen so that you can see everything else that you're going to get in this campaign. And I'll come back to that in a minute. All right, so the first thing I did after he contacted me is I popped up onto the net and I went to the Kickstarter page and I looked at his campaign. Um, he started it in November of 2016 and he's been providing files and he's just about got everything, you know, from the campaign sent out to the backers. And I looked and I said, you know, it, it looks it looks good. You know, I mean, the terrain looks good. And then I started printing it. And then I had to email him after I got done printing because and this, this is why I reference back to the, the Hearth Starts demoldings. I mean, a picture is only worth, you know, so much. When you see the terrain on the table in front of you, and then you're like, whoa, this stuff is really, really nice on there. It's big. It prints easy. It, it's going to take up nice, chunkier, you know, terrain table. So it's going to provide great blocking terrain and stuff like that. You know, and I'm, you know, I sent him an email back and I said, dude, this stuff is really nice. It's much better once I printed this out and got it in front of me than the pictures let on on there. You know, the renders only show so much when that thing comes off your print bed. And I mean, it looks really good. You know, so we'll talk about a couple of the pieces on here. We'll start up front and get some of these chunky ones up out of the way. So the first one right here is this radio tower. So he's got a common base, you know, right here. And, you know, this is something else that's nice, too, because I didn't even pay attention to this when I put it on um, and started to print. You know, that he's conscious of how much filament are you going to use so instead of making that solid underneath he's got a nice outline of it and it prints up and like you know it's not going anywhere this this is a solid piece on the table and then he's got a couple different type of antenna attachments that sit right down here in this groove and so this is a nice piece and then he made some heads that can go on the top if you like the stuff to go on the top he's got three different sizes for that you know and so he's got you know the ones with the skulls on it and stuff. But this is a really nice piece. It's big. It's going to it's gonna block line of sight. You know, if you don't want to use it, you know, if you want to use it for a radar, if you want to have multiple radar dishes, you can just take the antenna off. I kind of like it like this. I like the straight up and down antenna, I mean the radio tower, you know, sitting on this um, platform. So this was a really good piece. This is one of the first pieces I printed out. And that's when I had to email him and I said, you know, this is nice. You know, I didn't see this on the website, you know, and I started looking through the folders and stuff. And I'm like, you know, yeah, I can definitely use this on the table. This will fit right in with, you know, the other terrain. And so, like I said, here's that common base again, but this time you've got your radar dish on there. So that sits, you know, on top. Yeah, you, know, you could glue it down if you want, but I really don't think you need to. Um, it sits in there perfect. And he's got two different types of dishes. He's got one that's kind of this ground plane radar, and then he's got another one that's going to be up at an angle. So if you're using like an air search radar or something like that. So you do have multiple options in the radar itself. So just like the radio tower that had, you know, different pieces you could put on top, you've got a couple different options for the radar dish too. You know, so 
again, this is nice piece. It's cute. It's got the bottom right there, you know, and this just sits on top, you know, it's good sturdy terrain and it, it looks really good. It's going to look good on the table once it's painted up too. Uh, the next thing being that it's right up front, you'll see these barracks and stuff right here. I'll get to those in just a second. But this is a ruined version. So not only do you have the full versions, you have ruined versions of everything on the barracks also. So this is three pieces and it's just glued together. I think you can see the lines where they are. And there's all kinds of options with this. This is why I wanted to take at the end and load up the uh, build plates and simplify 3D. So you can see just how many pieces of ruined terrain that you're going to get and have the option to build and this stuff is all modular it doesn't you know i could build you know i could have put a a good wall down at this end and stuff like that it doesn't lock together with clips so either hey you're going to glue it together you know for the ruined pieces i want to glue them together because you know i want to have guys to be able to sit in here and they'll have cover bonuses and things like that in the games you know so in your sci-fi games it's great to have you know ruined pieces but this is nice. This will paint up nice, too. So I'm definitely going to get, you know, I'm going to go through these um, videos on here, but then I'm going to loop back through and start showing the painted pieces together. It might be multiple manufacturers on one video, but I really want to get some of this stuff painted and, um, you know, so you can see what it looks like painted and flocked. So that's the ruins. That's just one little piece of the ruins on there. Um, the, uh, the next thing is the barricade. So this right here, this this piece and this system would have made me subscribe to the Kickstarter by itself. Um, this this prints great. It looks great. It's got the uh, um, the removal. You know the stairs print separate, and you just you know you did, not the stairs, but the platform prints separate, and you just put them right there. And let me get a you know so that. You know, that's a base coated ultramarine on a 32 millimeter base, and he stands on that just fine. And so these all, you know, you can you can print a single tower, a double tower, or a triple. So what I did is I printed two triples, and so I got them there side by side, and then he did the corner pieces. So you can sit there and you can put these at the corner like this. And now all of a sudden you've got quite a long fortification going across your gaming table on there that's long i mean this is a single marine i could easily fit all 10 from the squad up on top of there and i can keep going and make it longer he's got a platform that's going to be on here too and i'm going to put a uh, screenshot of that up on here he said i could show it that's one that's the last piece one of the last pieces he needs to deliver for the sci-fi side is this platform that locks you know that not locks in here but it sits in here and it's basically a nice four by four with these awesome looking stairs that go up to it so you know, your, your guys aren't hopping magically through the air to jump all the way up here. There's actually stairs that come up to a platform, and then you can put your guys across the top. So these corner pieces are really nice. You could, let me just move this up front here. You know, you could take these four corners and actually put them together and almost, here, let me do this. Fix that and they, you know, it basically could sit there like that, you know, and you could have a, depending on what game you're playing, you know, you got somebody right in the middle of it. So there, there's options to do with these corners. You know, you can, you can do two together to get that 45, you know, or just do one and then come down the other side like this. So lots of options here. The, these, you know, these barricade towers are awesome. Um, the next thing, this tank. One of my favorite sayings, this thing is money right here. I don't know how much this would cost if you tried to buy this out in a store that's something this big, you know, and it, it prints in four pieces. It's hollow in the middle on there. So again, it conserves your filament and it's got different options. There's stuff with no stairs. You got the ladder, you know, I did the flat piece here and then there's a piece that has a uh, tank pipe connection on there. So this is a really really nice piece on there and there's multiple options for this and this stuff prints really cheap when you look at your filament usage on this terrain it's really economical because he did a good job with making sure that the pieces that were thick enough that needed to be printed print well but also left enough space 
in there that it's not you're not burning up this whole you know piece like this on infill coming all the way up so did a great job marcus did a really good job on this i will definitely be printing out probably about four more of these for the table also because these take up a nice a nice footprint if i put it down this is one two three four five six you know this is six seven inches you know on the table so you can put a tank behind that you know depending on what fantasy game you're doing and things like that and like i said with the uh with the tank pipes you know here we got some different options on your tank pipes yeah, you know, so yeah, you know, it's just showing some different stuff, and you know these all go together. And there is a on this, there's a tank, uh, there's a pipe connection in one of the pieces on this that you could, you know, you could butt this up to it, you know. So basically, it's going to, you know, be like that, and you could connect multiple ones together. So these are really nice. They print in two pieces. They're, you know, they're basically you just glue them together on there. So nice. Um, I'd almost like to see this, Mario, in your next Kickstarter campaign for these to get bigger. And so you have a pipe line. You know, I would like to go from the tank across my table with a nice pipeline, little bigger tanks, and then the uh, the interlocks that go across too. Printablescenery.com has one in one of their Kickstarters. It's pretty nice, but you know, some variety out there so it's not all the same thing is really good too. The next thing is the sci-fi barracks. And so what we have here, is these are modular modular pieces that you can pretty much mix and match how you want um, there's all different types of end caps so you have this right here is going to be your door I think I have another door over here you know and then this is a extender so what you would do with this you saw when I pushed this forward I had this connector piece right here and then I added on the the firing station up front well let's say i wanted this to be you know if i wanted this to be a little longer you know coming in so i could put this here and then i could add a door to it like this so that's how this train grows you don't necessarily have to groove i mean this is solid on the ground it's not it's not going anywhere in your game table you know you're not underway on a ship or anything like that so you can just take these pieces and you can mix and match them on your game day you know and one thing that's nice is the tops of these are flat so if you need to get one of your miniatures up on top of there it will stand there but in that same regard he did this cool little pack of accessory and greebles and stuff i'm going to pour them out right here and there's all kinds of different shapes and things and what you can do with these is that you can put these on to this terrain you know so like this big you know this square piece right here you know that fits just like this on there you know you could put it on either side you can take you know something like this and put it right there like that now what this does it gives you the ability to customize your stuff and there's a ton of these in this pack too and so i printed all the I basically these are the the good ones the the non um destroyed version so you know like these skinny pieces can sit right here you know like that you just glue them wherever you want there's all kinds of little pieces in here and again like i said at the end i'll zoom down in on these on that build plate when i show afterwards um you know where you can uh where you can see what all these are um and so back back to this now what was crazy about the you know because basically we want we want you to be able to late pledge on this kickstarter so um i'm going to put in the show notes the email address where you can email marcus and ask him about getting in on this pledge and then here's the crazy part just in the sci-fi side alone there's 165 stl files some of these are small like this but a lot of these are all variants for this stuff. There's a four-way of one of these. There's just a straight hallway. There's shorter ones. There's a longer one. I believe that's the medium size. I think that's the medium size right there. And so um, 
just in the sci-fi side alone, there's 165 STL files. I haven't even looked at the Viking side yet. The Viking side will be the next video when I cycle back around, probably in about three weeks, I'll have some of the Viking stuff printed. But we just wanted to get this out here. So I asked him, how much is it gonna cost for you to get in on this? And what's the retail going to be? You said the retail is gonna be close to $60, you know, for each. So 60 for the sci-fi and um, 60 for the uh, Viking side. You know, so, but if you mention this video in your email, what he's going to do is give you both sides um, for $35 plus $10 if you want the um, Viking add-on package, which includes rune stones, which he just sent me these right here. So you're looking, these are your rune stones right here. Um, and so there's, he's got different ones that's gonna have rune stones, a boat, a funeral pyre, a bonfire, and maybe some more stuff. So basically $45 will get you everything from the Kickstarter versus 120. $60 per set if you wait, if you mention this video and you email the address that'll be in the show notes for about the next 30 days, he said, for about the next month, if you email in, he will, you know, it'll, um, if you want everything, it'll be $35 plus 10 for the add-on, so 45 total US. If you just want the Viking stuff, it's $20 for the base pledge plus $10 for the add-on, so 30. That is, it's insane. $35 for the amount of files that you're gonna get is nuts on here. And this is good looking terrain and it's gonna look good on the table. So it, if you've seen the Kickstarter and you're wondering what type of stuff was in it, well, I just wanted to put it on the table and show you because that's, that's what I'm trying to do with the channel here is to just point out some of the terrain and stuff that's available out there that you can get your hands on and that we can put on the table because I can tell you there's nothing that's going to recoup the value of your printer than not having to pay for terrain that goes on your tabletop from from a manufacturer being able to pay for the STL files and print this multiple times for a buck or yeah, you know, for a few bucks on there. I mean, this was these are really filament efficient design that he's got going here. Um, it just is just a win win all around on there. You know, the price is great. Forty five dollars gets you everything, or thirty five dollars if you don't need the Viking um, additional Viking package on there. So that's that's up to you. But if you've seen this train and you you know you weren't sure before. I just want to put it out there on the table so you can see it. So it's definitely, this is definitely awesome stuff. So I highly, you know, I hope you jump on there for those of you that don't have this or miss this Kickstarter, because the more of this I'm putting out there, the more people are showing me different terrain packages that just kind of float through Kickstarter. You just don't see them, you know? So I'm hoping this is a place you can come and you can see some of those campaigns you missed and you can get on these campaigns late. Um, if you have any questions, you know, put them in the show notes down. I mean, not show notes, but leave me a comment below and uh, give Marcus an email and just make sure you say you saw it on uh, Greg's YouTube channel and you're going to get the special pricing for about the next 30 some days. So um, stick around after the video. I'm just going to run the, so the STL file so that you can see everything that comes in this pack because there's really a lot of stuff here and see what it looks like on the build plate. So. I appreciate, you, uh, I appreciate you guys watching the video. If you're new, please subscribe. Um, this is gonna kind of be the, the rotation. I'm gonna try and get weekly on this. I think I'm at a point now, I'm printing ahead pretty good. You know, so this is our terrain for print by Marcus. Uh, my next video will be the printable scenery terrain by uh, Time Warp, you know, from the Time Warp Kickstarter. And then I'm gonna loop back to Z1 and then on the war layer and just kind of cycle through. So everything time the video is gonna come out, it might be the same campaign, but you're gonna to get to see it in front of you. So that just like my Her Starts to Molding videos, you get to see what it looks like on the table, you know, here in you know a 3D view. I can pick it up, I can turn it around, I can show you underneath on there. So 
Again, I appreciate appreciate you watching the video. Hit like, share it out on Facebook, um, and I'll be back soon with another video. But stick around, and you'll get to see those build plates with all the rest of the STL files. Thank you. All right, we're back. This is just a quick three-minute segment that's going to show off all the files in the sci-fi portion of this uh, Kickstarter pack. Like I said earlier, there's 165 files, and uh, I had time to ask uh, Marcus a few questions about the Kickstarter. You know, he said, "Ask, tell me about yourself." You know, he says he comes from the land of the Vikings, Sweden. Actually, the part where I live was part of Denmark during the Viking Age, but Danes were also Vikings. He's a 40-plus IT worker, so that's kind of like myself. Uh, he has a wife, a son, and five cats. He's a long-term role player and a miniature war gamer. The game that started my miniature career was Necromunda about 20 years ago. And with that, I'm probably pretty sure he's pretty excited about Shadow War Armageddon that was just released. Since then, he's played various historical games. A self-made mech game where each player piloted one battle mech. I sculpted most of the mechs myself. They looked horrible, but it was fun. A couple years ago, I started collecting War Machine, but right now I play mostly smaller skirmish games with mixed miniatures, because that's all he has time for. He said, uh, for the Kickstarter, the Viking houses were easy. I come from Viking territory, and I wanted to make something I hadn't seen before. Medieval castles and villages were pretty common. The sci-fi stuff started as a small bunker for space soldiers and kind of grew by itself. Can't say where it came from. Of course, I look at other people's work all the time. I always use Google Images to find inspiration. And he said this was his first Kickstarter. He's quite content with how it went. He fulfilled all the stretch goals, considering all the work I've done. He said a rough estimate is about two months full-time work. It can't support me yet, but hey, it's Kickstarter, and now I have all these great models to sell. He said there definitely will be another Kickstarter. He's thinking uh, bigger. For terrain, he imagines a large industrial sci-fi sector, large pillars, stales, platforms, big machines, vehicles, etc., where you can build a smelting plant where a T-1000 can be dropped into a pool of liquid. He's also thinking about a smaller Kickstarter with a number of large starships that can land on the battlefield, spew out loads of troops, and load that pressure cargo and take off before being swarmed by, swarmed by NIDs. And uh, he said right now the pictures are all in his head, so... This was this was really nice. I mean, this terrain is really good. You saw it earlier in the video, so the deal is killer. I mean, it really is. 45 bucks, you're going to get a table full of terrain. And you couple that with a couple of the other terrain pieces out there by the other guys doing Kickstarters, you're going to have a fantastic package. So support Marcus and give him an email and hop on board.